What's up guys, welcome to Echo Productions, I'm Silas Willoughby and I'm coming at you today with a quick tutorial on making your drone footage look cinematic in Adobe Premiere Pro. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump into Premiere. Okay, so as you guys can see, I've already added the clips to my timeline. And in case you're wondering, this project is 4K at 24 frames per second. I've added three very different clips to my timeline to show you guys how this would work on all types of clips. I've got a shot over the park at sunrise, a shot in the mountains at dusk, and a shot in the red rocks in the middle of the day. All of these were filmed on my DJI Mavic Air at 4K 100 megabytes a second. Alright, so let's start with this clip in the red rocks. The first thing I want to do to this clip is speed it up since I didn't shoot it in sport mode. To do this, I'm right clicking on the clip, going down to speed, duration, and changing that to 200. Something else I like to do to my drone footage is add a parallax to make it more dynamic. So I'm going to reverse the speed on the layer by going to speed, duration, and selecting reverse speed. Then go up to the effects controls on this layer, scrub to the beginning of the clip on the timeline, and add a keyframe for scale by clicking on the stopwatch icon. Now I'm going to the end of the clip and increasing the scale until the framing is looking about the same as it does at the beginning. As you can see, this gives you this very cool parallax effect. Now this does only work on clips that are either moving forwards or backwards, and I wouldn't do it if you weren't shooting in 4K. Next I want to color correct and grade the footage. So to start, go to the media pool and select the sticky note icon and choose a new adjustment layer. Now drag that over your clip. Next, go to Lumetri Color on your adjustment layer. If the Lumetri panel isn't already there for you, go up to where it says Color and select it. We are going to start with the basic corrections. The first thing I want to do is warm it up a little bit as the white balance looks a little bit too cool. So go to the temperature slider and drag that slightly towards orange. I'm leaving mine at 4. I'm going to leave the rest of these alone for now except the saturation. I'm going to pull that up to about 120 since I shot in a log picture profile. Now open the Curves tab. I want to add a bit of contrast to this shot, so I'm adding a subtle S-curve. Now head to the Creative tab. Go up to where it says Look, hit Browse, and then find your LUT. I'm using my custom teal and orange LUT, and I'll put a link for a similar looking one in the notes down below that's free to download. Alright, so as you can see, this looks way too intense, so I'm going to the Intensity slider and pulling that down to about 50. Next, I want to sharpen my footage, so I'm dragging the sharpening up to about 25. Now I want to pull the vibrance and saturation up to about 15 as well. Now go to the Curves panel and go to the Hue Saturation Curves. I'm selecting red and yellow. Then go to the point in the middle, orange, and pull that up a bit to make it pop more. Alright, so here's our before and after. As you can see, all of that really made this shot look super cinematic. Now let's take a look at this shot in the mountains. This one is much simpler. I've already sped it up, so now let's get into the color correction and grading. I want to start by dragging an adjustment layer on again, and then I added the contrast and sharpening and pulled up the saturation and vibrance. And then I added the same LUT as before, but this, since this layer has less contrast than the previous one, it adds way too much blue for my liking, so I'm turning that all the way down to 40. Finally, let's take a look at this sunrise shot. This one is a bit different to grade. I'm going to start in basic corrections and pull the exposure down to negative 0.1. Then I'm pulling up the tint to 9 and the temperature to 6. This really makes the sunrise pop. Now I'm going to the curves panel again and I'm pulling the shadows down a decent amount. Then I want to pull the highlights back up to the middle, basically where they were before. Then in the creative tab I want to pull the vibrance up to 15 and the saturation up to about 106. And now to really emphasize the sunrise I want to go to the vignette tab and pull that to about negative 0.7. Finally I want to go to the effects panel and search for the transform effect. Now drag that onto each of your clips. and go to where it says use composition shutter angle and uncheck that and type in 180. This will give you a 180 degree shutter and help you out a lot if you didn't use ND filters and make your footage a lot more cinematic and smooth. Applying this effect it might slow down your timeline so that you get this red bar over your footage, which means it isn't going to play back smoothly in any viewer resolution. So to fix that go to the start of the red and hit I on your keyboard to create an in point. Then go to the end and hit O to create an out point. Now go up to where it says Sequence and select Render In Out. Then Premiere will render it out for you and you've got a much smoother timeline. And finally, if you want the black bars, I added go up to the Sequence Settings and change the Horizontal Pixel Dimension to 1632. This will give you a nice cinemascope crop and change your image to 21 by 9 from 16 by 9. However, I didn't use this for this project since I was going to be using it in a 16 by 9 project. I just used this free overlay from PremiumBeat.com. You would do something like that instead of changing your aspect ratio when you're using it with something else in a 16x9 project like I do for most YouTube videos and tutorials. Anyway, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Echo Productions. I'm Silas Willoughby, and I'll see you next week.